Palm Beach County has a very robust artificial reef program with over 150 artificial reefs in place. Recent reefings like the tugboat Pocahontas as the Danny McCauley Memorial Reef in 2013 and the cargo ship Anna Cecilia in 2016 have added to the county's stellar reputation as a world-class diving, fishing, boating and water sports destination. The underwater war machine, known as the USS Clamagor, was built near the end of World War II. This 322-foot-long diesel-electric submarine was named after the beautiful blue parrotfish. She started her 30-year stretch of first duty to the U.S. military in 1945 until her retirement in 1975. Based in Key West for many of those years, she was called the Grey Ghost of the Florida Coast as she protected us during the Cold War. Her 37-year-long second duty was as a museum vessel at Patriots Point Naval Museum in South Carolina starting in 1981. In January 2017, the Palm Beach County Commissioners unanimously voted to commit $1 million towards the budget to reef the USS Clamagore. Let's learn more about the Artificial Reef Project to honor the memory of this noble vessel and deploy her final duty on Eternal Patrol. We're at Patriots Point in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina, across the harbor from Charleston. This is the home of three museums, the USS Laffey Destroyer, the USS Yorktown Aircraft Carrier, and the USS Clamagore Submarine. Let's join Joe Weatherby to learn more about the USS Clamagore. I'm standing on the deck of the Clamacor. This is called the whaleback. Behind me is the sail, and the, up top of the sail is where the captain would navigate the boat at night. World War II submarines were navigated on the surface at night because the diesel engines could charge the batteries and the bad air could be gotten out of the inside of the submarine. Both the sail and the whaleback are designed to have water flow right through them, and the pressurized part of the submarine is down below. Sub will go down below during the daytime when there's danger of discovery by enemy ships and airplanes, and you would navigate by the periscope, which you could see up top. This is what you see in the movies when the captain looks around like this and locates enemy ships. We're in the control room of the Clamagore. And if you look around, you can see it's a pretty complex operation. On a vessel like this, most of the crew are cross-trained, meaning every guy knows the other guy's job. And there's hydraulics, there's air pressure, steering, controls, transfer of uh, fuel and ballast. And uh, you can also see the, there's bunk spaces down below. And up here is the conning tower where the captain would operate the periscope from looking for enemy shipping to torpedo. Um, this is the beating heart of the Clamagore. This is the forward torpedo room. There are six torpedo tubes, and you can see how big they are right here. They shove them in the tube, close the door, shoot the torpedoes. What's cool about this room is that when you look at a little tiny bunk like this, Three sailors would call this bunk home. One guy sleeps for eight hours, one guy works for eight hours, the other guy plays cards or something like that. To clean this room, all of the wiring has to come out, all the paint's coming off the walls. And one side of the submarine will be cut open and exposed, leaving these ring frames that you can see. We're in the pressure hull now, and these heavy steel uh, girders are what supports it from the ocean crushing in on the, on the boat. This is the galley right here is where a uh, hundred people get fed 24-7. The cooking never stops. 
They feed them in shifts. The Climagor Project in Palm Beach is planned as a very rich program that's not just for boaters and for divers. What is planned is a land-based museum using some of the displays. It's on the drawing board, but they'll be transferred on land so that the whole family can enjoy the submarine experience. We're in the engine room in the Climagor. There are two. This is the after engine room, and she has four diesels. They go down two decks. These are giant locomotive diesels and take a lot of maintenance. She's also got 500 1,000 pound batteries aboard. The engines run at nighttime when she's running on the surface, charging the batteries down below, and then the batteries run the propellers at the back of the boat. Standing on the stern of the USS Klamagor, right at the, right at the back of the boat, below me are the propellers, right where you figure you'd find them. Also, there's four torpedo tubes down below me um, and the rudders, whereby the captain would steer the boat. Time and tide waits for no man. And these ships are very, very expensive to keep as museums. Um, typically, and, and with the Klamagor, there are three choices. One of which is to keep her in the water, but it's very, very expensive to maintain these uh, museum ships as the salt water tries to chew them up. Um, another choice is scrapping. And scrapping, it's the fate of a lot of ships, most of the Navy, um, and the ship and her history lives on in the storybooks, but not in reality. We are artificial reefers, and that's the third choice. There's one good dive left in this ship, and it's gonna be off of Palm Beach County. Most sailors don't wanna see their ship get cut into razor blades, and our job is to save her from the scrapyard. So, we're gonna clean her all up, which is also expensive, but you only have to do it once, and we're gonna deploy her off of Palm Beach County as an artificial reef. Clean for the environment, a home for fish, a great place to go fishing and scuba diving. And, and Clamagor goes on final duty as an underwater classroom, research laboratory, and world-class recreational destination. The reefing of the USS Klamagor offshore of Palm Beach County is a significant undertaking. Project leader Joe Weatherby and his team at Artificial Reefs International USS Klamagor, based in Miami, have the right credentials. They have over 30 years of reefing experience and success stories of military ship reefings like USS Mohawk, HMCS Annapolis, and USS Vandenberg. The engineering plan is to raise the submarine up onto a special barge at Patriots Point and transport it to a shipyard for extensive removal of equipment, environmental cleaning to EPA standards, building a support frame, and cutting one side of the submarine viewing holes. The proposed reefing site is in 90 feet of water southeast of the Juno Pier, approximately 1.5 miles offshore. Certain equipment will be set aside for a land-based museum near the reefing site. The resulting reef-ready vessel will be scuba diver friendly. A notable tourism attraction will be created with the underwater submarine and land-based museum. The placement on the sandy ocean floor will employ an anchored strong frame to keep the vessel upright. The total budget for the project is approximately four to five million dollars, including contingencies. Palm Beach County has pledged one million dollars Retail sponsor Salt Life is raising another $1 million. Patriots Point has contributed $530,000. Other sponsors are donating time and materials. The remaining $2 million of the total budget needs to be raised and your help is appreciated. Let us know if you or someone you know would like to help. We are looking for donors, big and small, to help USS Klamagor go on her final duty on Eternal Patrol as a vibrant artificial reef in the ocean off Palm Beach County. Please contact Joe Weatherby at Artificial Reefs International USS Klamagor for further information at the phone number or email at the end of this video. 
Thank you for considering this very worthwhile submarine reefing project that will be a wonderful tribute to all veterans and provide Palm Beach County with a unique and valuable artificial reef honoring the USS Clamagore.